overextending themselves. We want them to bust out their metaphorical teeth. That's what we wanted. We wanted to see a market correction. That's a capitalist term. Okay, and these people, they won't allow it. So what's going to happen? Their, their, their destruction is going to come on there suddenly, like Jesus said. I will come like a thief in the night. You're going to be caught with your pants down. Not ready. Your riches are going to rot. You think you can own the wealth of the planet in infinity? You can't do that. God's not going to tolerate that. We're going to take over, and we're going to share it, and we're all going to be unfathomably wealthy, and we're going to serve each other because we have an instinct. It's, we have a conscience. We have a fail-safe, a default that God built into us to be upright, good, honorable peop, uh, human beings, creatures with integrity, with a desire to be appreciated, to use our talents, to give love, and to accept love. That's what we are. We're cosmic, eternal beings. And those that are on board with the good fight, we're going to live forever. We're going to live forever. Not in this crap hole, but we're going to inherit a much better world. That's what's to come. And we all need to ready ourselves. What does that mean exactly? Down to the smallest details. Use your own imagination. But one big thing I could tell you that's going to be different is we know that money won't be there. Whether or not you know, we, we're, we know we're naked anymore, if sin has gone that far, I don't know. I don't know. It talks about this, these robes of righteousness we're going to have. Okay, so maybe we always will be ashamed of our nakedness and be modest to some degree and call it decent or indecent, depending on whether we're clothed or not. I don't know. I mean, I know this much is that sexuality is a beautiful thing God gave us naturally, and it could be appreciated greatly. God made the man to really enjoy the beauty of the woman. Come on. I mean, what guy doesn't get that, man? What an awesome creature, man. I mean, it, it just, I understand that this is my other half. The rib was taken out. I'm not satisfied. I'm not content. I'm not happy without a woman. And that's natural. It's good. That's the way God made a man. And a woman, I don't, can't speak for them. I'm not a woman. But I know that a lot of women like men. And that's good. That's all right. In its organic form, in its purest sense, as a beautiful thing. But then you inject the fall of man, the curse that befell us, and this knowledge of good and evil, our fallen state, all this crap. And it's just all twisted and screwed up. Satan is just, he's just a fly in the ointment. Just messed up everything from the get-go through this deceit, this lie that we all bought into. And that's what it is. It's just that we've been deceived by these evil people. And we're all culpable. To, and we need to wake up. We need to individually. We need to accept our own responsibility for ourselves. And then to go out and help others to wake up. Yes, we are our brother's keeper. We are our sister's keeper. We've got to care about each other. That's the love. These are the new two commandments that Jesus gave us. Okay, is that you honor me, love me above all else, revere God, fear God only. Okay, and this is a beautiful thing to stand in fear and awe and this trembling of God. This is righteous. This is a good thing. We're owned by him and we should see that as a beautiful and good thing. Why would you want to own yourself when you didn't create yourself and you can't decide where you go from here to know that it's your owner that owns your soul. He owns your true essence, your heart, your, your mind, your spirit. All these invisible qualities, your imagination, your thoughts, everything belongs to this God, this owner, rightful owner. So this is a beautiful and good thing. We should give ourselves willingly to this spirit of truth and, and, and just say, look, I'm just a mortal. Okay, I don't know where I'm going from here, God, but I lay it at your feet. I want to go to a better world, and I want to, I want to work with you. I want to work for you. I want to help you win treasures in heaven because those will be my treasures too. We want friends. That's it. We want people that are willing to live together in peace and harmony, safety, security, freedom, and prosperity, not for some, but for everybody. That's what it comes down to. This is about everybody participating, just like our Constitution is so beautiful. Life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. This is for everybody, okay? And that's what we need to understand is that fundamentally, fundamentally, we've got to be everybody's friend in this thing. We've got to say, look, I know that uh, you believe this way, but I'm going to tell you another way to believe. And it's the way that God believes. And here, it's in the Bible, backed up. It's in the teachings of Jesus. It, it's in every faith. 
in the world are some of these similar teachings, this golden rule about treating others the way you want to be treated. Like I was saying about the greatest commandment being to honor God above all else because that's rightful. He gave us everything. He gave us our, the breath in our lungs he could take from us right now, any of us. You know, while I talk about living to be 100, hey, I wouldn't mind. But I tell you what, that this could be my last day on earth, just like any of us. That's just the way it is. We're like a mist. Here today, gone tomorrow. So we need to be right with God today. There's no time. We need to ask forgiveness today for all our sins, for anybody we've ever offended. Ask forgiveness. Be willing to forgive everybody of anything they've done against us. And then ask forgiveness for ourselves. And then just go forth and love one another. Just care. That's it. You know, I, I, the older I get, I feel like I'm finally starting to just put down the arrogant chip on my shoulders and just say, you know something, I'm more and more ready that this be my last day on earth and I've got to embrace humility and I've just got to love people and just give people a break. Just be, be more and more generous with my compassion, with my mercy, with my forgiveness, with my humility. And, uh, and display that to others because I give a damn, okay? Fundamentally, that's what it comes down to, is just giving a damn about others. That is loving each other. If we're genuine, if we're sincere, our hearts will lower. We'll be right. If we check in with him every day and ask, invite the spirit of truth in, he will correct us as necessary. Because we can't depend on others. We're all just humans. We're all just fallible. We can't expect others to understand us. We can't expect others to love us in the way that he can. That's it. End of story. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. Is that he knows us. And we can choose to be whoever we really want to be. But it has to be approved from on high. We don't ever have to be worry about losing our individuality. Okay, that's impossible. We're all extremely individual. We're all extremely beloved in our own special way. And he knows us and all the good memories we get to keep forever. All the good things we have stored up in us, we get to keep forever. And all the rest will go away. That's it. Just like the refining of silver. You know you got a lot of dross in you. A lot of stuff that's got to be melted out. We all do. And it's going to come. We're going to get these renewed bodies like it's written. These imperishable bodies, these eternal bodies, that's what's coming. So all the evil thoughts that we have, all that stuff is going to be a thing of the past. All that sin, all that separation from him. If we ask his forgiveness and we, ask, and we confess our sin, he is faithful for, to forgive us. Slow to anger and quick to forgive. That's what's written. And that's a beautiful thing. And that's for everybody. I just have a couple minutes left on this tape, but I wanted to get into some of the current events. I don't spend a lot of time on it because uh, I think that uh, anybody that listens to me probably listens to Alex Jones' channel too. So that's where I get a lot of my news. But I just give opinions, talking points, and uh, but it's not my job. I understand that these people have the job to get the, the most accurate news and the most recent happenings in the world. We got this terrorist thing and it killed like five people and one of them a cop in uh, in Britain. And uh, so we know we got these horrible things going on and um, and you can get the details on the show. But you know, this is the, just demon spirits acting up, people being turned against each other. All this division we got to remember is being created on purpose. This climate change, religion of death, the only answer they have is uh, to pour more money into the problem, to save the earth, uh, and uh, by impoverishing people to the point of death. That's what's going on. That's what this whole climate change, all these people, they're into the religion of death. So, you know, it reminds me of this Section 8. All these programs they build to fail, okay? The crime industrial complex, all these things are threatened by the end of extreme poverty, which again, could, all these problems could be solved tomorrow. But uh, this is what it's all about, is just killing people. This is the only answer they have. They don't want to discuss uh, all the suppressed clean technology. They don't want to discuss disruptive technology and discuss who that's disrupting. They just want to say, look, we're the altruistic ones to save the planet, pay us more money. And somehow we'll 
find a way, like research money, right? These carbon taxes, and we'll find a way to save the earth. You know, forget God. God blew it. He's useless. He's incompetent if there is even a God. Okay, that's their attitude. Very arrogant, very elitist, very hypocritical, living by a double standard. I can't stand all these people that prescribe to this pseudo-religion of, of the, the anti-science 